Hello Dino Peeps! In the past days I sat down to do theory crafting around a specific topic that has been added to the game with the Aberration DLC and then extended with the Bob's Tall Tales DLC, the genetics and trait system. I know many of you are ARC breeders or found the channel through that topic. Genetic and traits are another puzzle piece added to the already complex breeding mechanic, one that will turn around the game's meta for sure. The genetic system is part of the main core game, but in order to see and manipulate genes, extract them and add them to the creatures, you need the Bob's Tall Tales DLC. Even though I'm fairly certain, it won't take long until modders jump on the system and offer alternatives. But that also means if you do not have the DLC and you find a creature with a good trait, you can still use that creature and its trait will be active. You will just have a harder time knowing the trait or moving it to another dino as you need the DLC tools for that. Since this is part of the paid Bob's Tall Tales DLC, I have an opinion about it, which I will give you in the end of the video in my summary. Getting traits is pretty straightforward. There are 50 different traits that can be found on wild dinos and wild dinos only for now. Each of them have three tiers in which they can spawn on a creature. The rarity of these are different. The lowest tier 1 traits are more common while the highest tier 3 traits are fairly rare. Traits are also bound to the species you got them from. So in order to collect traits for a rex, you need to tame rexes first. Here it doesn't matter what level they have though. An animal will spawn with only one trait but can hold up to five traits. It can also hold up to three traits of the same kind and their effect will add up with each other. There are two kind of traits. One that affect the animal itself that is carrying the trait and one that affect the inheritance of stats on an offspring of that creature. The baby won't inherit the trait itself, but will be affected by the trait of the parents. More about this later in detail. Now we know the basics on how traits appear in the world. Now let's look on how we can mess with them. So far there are no restrictions which trait can drop on which dinosaur. Not all traits of course will make sense on every dinosaur, but at least for now every dino has the chance to get every trait with the same rarity. But we found traces of possible future restrictions. Not sure if they are set in place for modders or if Studio Wildcard plans on creature exclusive traits or even event traits. Everything is possible at this point. I have talked to a few people and I have heard the question on why to implement this mechanic now in the game. While I can't answer for the devs, I have my own explanation for this. We all have noticed that the arcs have become very stuffed with animals. And don't get me wrong, aside from any animal that steals or knocks you out while having glowy eyes in the night, I wouldn't want to miss any of them. But reality is that we only have limited tasks for our animals and in the past each new animal made two or three others obsolete. Sometimes planned to reduce the amount of tamed animals players need to help the server performance, but sometimes also by accident when creatures became better than their specialized counterparts. Sometimes creature concepts just didn't work at all and while a specific creature was a great idea, people just didn't open up to use it. We now have hundreds of different animals in the game and players who are following the meta will go for the same five creatures in every playthrough without even looking at the others. And while I think meta play is probably one of the most boring things in the game, we have gotten balancing patches in the past that would try to change things up. But also, people don't like changes to existing things, so how to bring more value into creatures that aren't used yet, but should have a place in the spotlight with some of the changes? The answer is by making those changes player chosen and optional. You want to take your Tyrannodon to collect some resources, but it can't really carry a lot? So why not giving it weight reduction? You would like to take a specific animal to the boss, but they have notorious been too weak to survive? Just give them Kingsling and they will do more damage to bosses and alphas, but do less to other creatures. As you can see, it's basically build a bear, but with dinosaurs and you choose the flavors your tame comes with. First thing you need when you want to get started to interact with a trait system is the gene scanner. It's a handheld device that needs to be made with these resources. It can be acquired as soon as you hit level 86. It has two different modes. One is a dino scanner that can show you wild dinos close by, but the other one, which is the interesting one for us, is the genetic interface. And the pokey thing, you can look at the creature with a scanner before you tame it, so you know which trace it has. And once you find a creature with the trait you want, you have to tame it. 
Once it's tamed and part of your tribe, you can then extract the gene by poking it. It will open an interface that shows all available genes and then you can extract it and save it on your scanner. The scanner can save up to 10 genes and the gene database or structure that you can also build at level 86 with these resources can hold up to 200. They don't stack though, but you can hold more with more databases. The database only needs electricity and is therefore very accessible without having to mess with bosses first. What you do with a creature afterwards is up to you. If it's a bad level, you probably don't need it anymore. Now that you have a nice collection of traits, you probably want to apply to a creature. It basically works the same way like extracting, just reverse. But it has one restriction. The creature you want to give the traits to needs to be either a baby, a juvenile or an adolescent. You can't apply traits to an adult creature. While it is in the baby stage, you can flip-flop around the traits as you please, but by the time your chosen dinosaur switches to adulthood, you can't apply more traits, only remove them. Now we checked off how to get traits, how to extract them and how to store them and also how to apply them. Now let's have a look of what kind of traits we actually have. Like I mentioned before, there are 50 traits in total. Technically it's 52, but I think two of them are admin-only testing traits that can't be obtained in normal gameplay, but only spawned in. So we're going with 50 traits. These are the 50 traits that we're working with at the moment. And we already know that there are going to be more traits in the future. So if you see this video in a few months, the list will be outdated and for sure longer. These can now be divided in three different categories. One is the carrying category, one is the breeding and mutating category, and then traits that alter how stats work either permanently or temporarily. The carrier traits are pretty much self-explanatory. They will reduce the weight of resources in the dinosaur's inventory by a specific percentage. When you stack them, it's even more efficient. As you can see, there are traits for Scorched Earth specific resources and for Aberration. So you can assume that on other maps with their own resources, like Extinction, we will get more traits for that as well. The inherit genes are super interesting for us breeders, so I will talk about them in the end because it's a little bit more to explain. The last column of traits will give you life, movement speed, stamina recovery and other nice effects on your animal when specific conditions are met. These are very much important for creatures that you are using or plan on using to do different tasks on the Ark. Now coming to the inherit stats. These are super interesting as it is the first time that Ark messes with mutation chances. And not only do they mess with them, but by the amount, that's kind of a big deal. We have three genes, frail, robust, and mutable. These will affect the offspring of the animal, not the animal itself. Robust and frail basically have the same job, but on opposite ends. While robust, together with a stat attached to it, will make sure that the higher of both parents' stats will more likely be inherited by the baby, the frail one will make sure that the bias is towards the weaker of both parents' stats. But now you ask, why would you want to have a weaker stat to begin with? This is especially for official breeders who try to stay below the level cap on official and need to downbreed stats to have some leeway before hitting the cap. The mutable trait though, this one will make sure that your animal's mutation chance is higher. Just flat out more mutations. Now here's the crazy thing, I'm not sure if it's intended or unintended, but you can use this mutable gene up to six times. A stack of three on each parent, and with six tier three in total, this gave us a mutation chance of 37% compared to the 7% you usually have. And while 37 sounds low still as an observation, just during testing, I got two legit triple mutations, something I have not seen in almost 13,000 hours in ARC, in which 10,000 were probably only breeding creatures. And this is kind of a big deal. The mutable trait is just as much as the frail and robust attached to a stat and not a generic mutation trait. This means for an ideal breeding group, you now want to have a group of dedicated females for a specific stat. But since the mutable gene is so strong, that also means you can downsize your breeding groups. And then you have several smaller female groups while getting the same or even better mutation results as the chances are much higher. We're currently developing a tool and a calculator to provide a clearer overview over the numbers. I have spent about 12 hours testing Dino Baby Hatching, but I'm still in the early stages of collecting all the data needed for a full transparency on how the trade system will change the game for the breeders. However, I wanted to change this information now because we finally have a system that can and will influence mutation chances. But let's talk about the unavoidable topic here. We moved past the discussion of whether the DLC is mandatory now or not. 
If you want to breed and mutate animals, there's no real way around this DLC anymore. It's not that you couldn't do it without, but you would be at a massive disadvantage if you don't use traits now. I still think the DLC is worth the price of what it offers, but I can absolutely see why people might not be happy about how deeply it is now integrated into the core game. But this integration of the DLC into core game mechanics also raises the question about the future direction of how DLC content will impact the base game experience. And while it offers exciting opportunities for breeding, it also potentially creates a two-class community between players who own the DLC and those who don't. It will be interesting to see how Studio Wildcard balances the interests of the players in the future. In the future, however, I will take a closer look on how exactly traits are incorporated into theory crafting for meta builds and alternative builds and what a breeding setup with traits can look like. But we will also have to take another look at how reliably good traits can be found in the wild. I hope this first overview has helped you to set your expectations on what's about to come. Thank you for watching and see you later. Bye!